Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about what it really means to be a senior developer as well as really how to get to that level in a relatively short amount of time. This is something I think I've been pretty successful with. Um, you know, it's always, you don't want to always be one of those people that are just talking yourself up and things like that. And so um, that's not what this video is about. Uh, but you know, when you have your boss, you have directors, when you have uh, companies hiring you uh, to be a senior dev, then maybe some of the choices you made to get there in two years is worth sharing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to be a senior dev, as well as what I think you can do so that you can go and become a senior dev as quickly as possible and start uh, getting those fat checks and getting those cool projects. I'd like to take the moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been working with Dev Mountain for about two years now, and I've interviewed hundreds, not hundreds, but I've interviewed many candidates from there, and I've met a lot of few. One of one of their graduates is my good friend, Engineer Truth, who's uh, enjoyed the program. I've even visited uh, back when they had their Provo, Utah campus, which was absolutely gorgeous. So uh, if you're interested in any sort of coding bootcamp, iOS development, web development, um, UI UX quality assurance. I suggest you give them a consideration at devmountain.com. So let's first start by defining what a senior dev is. At least in my eyes, some uh, some people may disagree, but I think we're gonna find we're gonna be pretty similar in our definition. So um, a senior dev typically will have a certain amount of years of experience on like a job application, but that doesn't really what defines a senior developer. Usually somewhere between three and five. Um, once you sort of have three years industry experience, which is really low by any other by any other industry, three years of industry experience would not really make you a senior by almost any other industry software it does. Um, five, still pretty low, but <coughs> you know, devs, uh, a lot of devs don't work past 10 years, they go into other careers, so I see, see why that's the case. Um, but forget about the years of experience. Um, it's more about certain traits and qualities and skills that they've obtained over their years. And, um, you know, if you have these really at the end of the day, this is how you can get up and running pretty quickly. So, um, a senior dev to me is somebody who, um, makes some of the harder choices when it comes to code. So every organization is going to be pressing you. Every organization is going to try and, um, you know, squeeze as much juice out of you as they can and because of that um you know junior developers and i've been guilty of this as well will sometimes cut corners maybe they won't write tests maybe the code because they're so stressed out about the environment because everything's on fire um they're doing things they shouldn't do and maybe they don't even realize it or they're just writing worse code right they're on that death march and you know uh <laughs> um the the thing about senior deaths is they've been on enough death marches that they know the roof is almost never on fire you know in web development specifically most of us are going to be working on e-commerce platforms things like that you know the only real thing where things are on fire is like military like anything that involves life or death everything else is not life or death and so you know, the senior dev sort of understands that. And because of that, they have to respect the code quality. They have to make sure that they're writing the best code possible. It's testable, it's maintainable. Um, and Because at the end of the day, they're gonna have to maintain it or somebody else is gonna have to maintain it. And if you don't protect the code, that's something that, um, you know, that, that uh, no one else will. And one reason that's sort of a trait is your hiring managers oftentimes are devs and they're looking for people who have um, you know, at, really at the end of the day, a backbone, people who are going to tell the business, no, we can't meet that deadline and, uh, are going to have to be able to push back. Now, um, that brings me to my next point is good senior devs have great communication. And why I say that is because when you do that pushback, you have to have another option for them. You have to clearly communicate why. You have to clearly communicate other potentials. It's like, okay, you're asking these 10 things. These are the three we can give you by this date. We can give these next three a week later and the following four in two weeks after that. You know, these are what's easiest from a technical perspective and most realistic so we can get that to you. And not only that, you, you mentor. You are one of the people who are going to be looked up to by junior developers. You're gonna be one of the people where they say, hey, um, you know, we have questions and then you're going to be like, cool, let me see if I can get you an answer. I may not have it in the back of my brain, but I'm, 
you know, you're going to be able to mentor other people. You're going to be able to teach other people. You're going to be able to educate. You're going to be able to help and, and, uh, you're the mother, you're the, you nurture, <laughs> um, no, um, but yeah, that's, so communication is crucial because oftentimes businesses aren't going to have the clearest requirements. There's been plenty of times where you ask a business what they want and they don't really know and they don't really know how to explain that. And it's sort of like this weird relationship. You can very well communicate it to a relationship where I can, I could say with me and my girlfriend, I've been, what do you want? I kind of want this. Well, what about, okay, let's go do this. No, I don't really want that. And then you have to go back and forth and it's like, you have to, and user requirements and wireframes, well, all that sort of stuff, you may, they may, may not be there. Acceptance criteria, you're going to have to pull teeth gently with clean communication, and that's part of it. Um, another great trait of a senior developer is that they are a good generalist and an expert specialist. So um, for the majority of my, I, I guess, yeah, the majority of my career, um, I've been a front end developer. I've had full stack roles and my new role is going back to do full stack JavaScript with a little bit of DevOps. And um, one reason that even though I have little DevOps experience and I haven't been doing too much full stack is that I'm an expert specialist in, in the front end and I'm a good generalist in everything else that touches um, you know, web development. And that makes you a good senior developer because you can provide knowledge about your niche and you can provide value outside of your niche, which is what companies are looking for. So they say, okay, cool. We see you haven't really been doing too much back end. We see you haven't really been doing too much DevOps, but you're killing it in the front end and we can use that. And we're going to, you know, the fact that you're able to become a expert or be, be able to become very proficient in this technology leads us to believe that you can be very proficient in these other ones, given time, effort, and energy. And that's what companies are looking for when they want to hire good senior developers. Uh, and, and generally speaking, if you understand other aspects of the application that maybe you don't touch all that much, you now have the ability to really see the full picture. And so you can provide value to other people who maybe they're stuck on their niche and you have a slight outside perspective that'll help, which always is great as well. So, um, you know, senior developers will typically be working in every aspect of the application, but also will be uh, a very expert niche specialist. So another thing is architecture. Senior developers understand, um, I should I should be a little bit more general actually, architecture and principles, because sometimes these things go hand in hand. Um, as a junior developer, you know, a lot of these things you can go, um, you can compare about what junior developers don't have and then what senior developers do have. And what junior developers often don't have or do have is a, a understanding of the core programming languages and how they work and the frameworks and all that sort of stuff. Um, but what they don't have is um, principles. What they don't have is architecture. Um, and all these things that teach you how to write clean code, maintainable code, how to do object oriented programming properly or functional programming, whatever it is. And when you look at a, a piece of code and you see someone, you're doing a code review, for instance, and you say, well, I see you're inheriting from this class, but do you see that it's breaking the Liskov substitution principle because you can't have the, you can't have the child class substitute for the parent class which means that it's probably improper inheritance. And you don't understand these sorts of things where you know, now you're providing additional value in just a code review process, which is why code reviews are so great. It's just a separate video, but um, I love code reviews. I'm very big code review. I'm one of those guys at work that if a code review comes up, I love doing it, not because I want to critique, not because I want to provide value. Um, part of it is I, I want to educate and part of it is I learn as well. So like take advantage of um, code review process where um, and you have people who write code different ways and you might learn something. That's something I think, um, you know, it's kind of another point, uh, of, as a good senior dev is you're always learning, you're always growing, you're always have your eyes open, uh, and, uh, ears, ears listening. I don't know. Ears open, <laughs> I guess. And, um, willing to see and, uh, code is a great way of that. So, um, you know, in architecture to that point about not only do you have principles, but you have an idea of how, what's good fi file structure. Um, you know, how are, should things be organized? Um, you know, are we going to do model view controller? What it, you know, you have these sort of higher level, uh, more abstract things and you know how to use them to create 
a good project that's sort of uh, maintainable. And so at the end of the day, those are the major things. And I, I'll say one more thing that I personally have seen um, that senior devs typically will be the ones to start projects. And because of that, so like, um, you know, a lot of times junior developers go in and they start working on another project or they're, they're making a very basic like back office tool or something like that where it's gonna just help manage items or users or something for the business, not really client facing. Uh, senior developers typically will be the ones to build the tools for the rest of the company to use. They'll be the ones that will uh, maybe set up the initial project and and get you going there. And you know, so then that's because of those arc because of the architecture and principles and and uh, good design. So um, that's to me what it means to be a senior dev and sort of how I've been making you know um, six figures since like a year. A little over a year a uh, little over a year of experience the reason is because I, I've sought out these things I've gone out of my way to see what 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 senior devs have that I don't have and I've, I've set a game plan to look at that say okay um, what does it mean to write clean code and then you know and this is not just me analyzing things this is me having conversations with my tech lead and say look what are things that will make me more valuable and um, if you have a good tech lead, they'll give you good answers. Not every tech lead is great. Uh, I happen to uh, think very highly of my previous tech lead from like two jobs ago. Um, but you know, these are things that you may have to seek out and it's not gonna be as easy as just asking somebody. You might have to figure that out. What are, what are some principles should, I should learn? You know? Um, you know, what is some good architecture patterns, design patterns, and you know, how can I become a good generalist? And, these are things that I've gone out of my way to learn, and some of the thing, resources I've used. Um, uh, two things that I'd highly recommend that will teach you how to be a senior developer is um, the book Clean Code as well as the Clean Coder. There's two uh, links in the description below where you can help me out with some affiliate money. Um, if there's no other books you read about software development in your entire lifetime, those are two books you should read. And those are also two books that you should read regardless of where you're at in your career. You could already be a senior developer. If you've never read that, read it. If you've never written a line of code, read it. Um, because the clean coder is going to tell you about how to be a professional and what it means to be a software engineer, which is another aspect. And those are some of the things that we're talking about here. Um, you know, because about how to protect the code and how to handle the business relationships. Because you have to understand, um, as, a, as a developer, you're oftentimes negotiating uh, is kind of the, the way that it goes where you, the business wants what the business wants and you have to be able to deliver something. And at the end of the day, you are, it's sort of a, a give and take and you know, it's a deal. No one's trying to swindle anyone on the other side, but you, you have to sort of meet that happy medium deal uh, about what's possible, what's not. Um, so the clean coder is great for that. And clean code is going to teach you about some of those principles. So it's teach you about some of that, um, some of those um, you know ideologies around software, and if you're if you're more of a senior level developer, a mid level developer, and you want to learn about architecture, Clean Architecture is a great book as well, which is a description in the a link in the description below. So um, these are things that I have focused on in the last uh, God, I guess for the last three years. I I um, I've been in October. It'll be no in September. It'll be three years of official. Uh, full-time software development for me and the majority of my bosses have considered me a senior developer since about a year and a half ago and they've paid me uh, what a senior developer would get paid which is really all I care about you can call me super junior if you want to be cutting me fat checks I don't really care all that much um, and my new role has a <laughs> senior full stack engineer in it and um, you know oftentimes you have to be proficient on your own as a as a senior dev which means that you know it's always okay to need help as an engineer, but you, you gotta be able to sort of get up and going and uh, not need the hand holding as a senior dev as well. So anyhow guys, that's uh, my, my sort of two cents about what it means to be a senior dev. And if you go and you, you gain those skills, which are a lot of more abstract and not necessarily um, you know um, very detailed. Like you know, one thing I would say for solid principles in terms of principles, architecture, you gotta at least learn um, what it means to utilize model view controller 
Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a, maybe I'll do like the top ten architecture and principles video. So it's just to give you a list because a lot of times uh, when I talk about these things, um, you don't even really know what to say. Okay, cool. I want to learn architecture. Okay, I want to learn these principles. So I want to get up and going. And other than the books I recommended, which will ha talk about a lot of these things, um, you know, where do you go from there? So maybe I'll do another video about that down the road. But uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share. All that good stuff. My courses, there's links in the description below, as well as those books I recommended. Uh, hit that notification bell, that's the thing. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 Algorithm Challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it, so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.